Hag Besak Samach. Praise Yah, hallelujah. And we come to prepare and to celebrate this hog. And we're coming to fellowship and join together and communicate the excitement of breaking the bread and also of enjoying the meal and the plate the way it was written in the word and to put on our priestly garments like and be awaiting for that moment with excitement and our Mashiach Yeshua came and shed his blood as the fullness of the atonement and we do the memorial of Pesach continually in celebration of that memorial, what he did. But also along with all the family of Yesharel that celebrate together. So right now in the Shem of Yoshua, we thank you, Father, for this great opportunity to be together with everybody. We had a great hour ahead fellowship, just kicking it, talking and sharing. And we thank you for this opportunity. But we're excited what's coming. Yes, there's chism. Yes, there's a wall. Yes, there's resistance. Yes, there's doubt and unbelief. But yes, there's emona rising up in people that know that they are from the they are from the house of Yeshurel. And we give you praise and honor and welcome everybody. We welcome everybody today everybody today we just excited about this opportunity to fellowship together father we bind every stronghold of the enemy that would try to interfere with our electronics and the frequencies and the wavelengths of the of the system of things that we use as technology and we pray everything would flow good and nothing would be interrupted and others that were did show up they'll come in and come in and and, and, and join the fellowship but also father we pray that in the Shem of Yoshua Mashiach that as we begin to read the scriptures that you'll quicken us of verses to expound because this we're preparing for Pesach and we're preparing for Mozoot we're preparing for the time of really seven plus days and, and, and we're going to celebrate it and we're going to also step into uh the, the the first fruits we're going to step into everything that we need to step in to move forward of this exciting actually the, the first month of the 14th yummy to celebrate and, and start this year off i know in secular and judaism they 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 celebrate the New Year's of the other calendar more than the, the first year, month of the fir, of 14th Yamin. They celebrate more what they should be not even paying attention to. But we want to focus and keep the focus. We want you to teach us. We want you to instruct us. And we welcome the Ruach Neshima presence to breathe on us and saturate us and give a spontaneous anointed flow to share and fellowship as we get prepared to be prepared. In the Shem of Yoshua Mashiach, we pray right now. Manishma, what's up, Anishim Mishporka? We celebrate with you. We come to celebrate with you and, and uh, Ba'i Yasharel, Shalom Yehudim, Shalom Ephaim, Shalom, all the house of Yasharel and all the houses together. And we say, Ma Shalom to the men, Ma Shalom Ka to the women. And we greet you all that are grafted in by Emunah and also in your DNA. Hallelujah. And no one can take it away because it's our Emunah and what we understand and believe in the Shem of Yoshua. And now, Father, we just praise you and honor you as we come together and thank you for this time of celebration. Hallelujah. As we completed last week, 
we were looking at the 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 do's and the don'ts. <laughs> There's a lot of do's and the don'ts, and we really didn't get through all of it, but we know what's not there, and we know what's there, okay? And we know that... Uh, there's been add-ons, and even in the, if you saw the video we did last week, uh, I, I found the place that brother was talking about, and I, he sent me some information, and I was able to put pictures of the Baal uh, Tower and uh, Bridge, and uh, the history of it, and, uh, and the places over there in uh, Europe, as well as uh, to, to find other things that uh, in 1300, when they were starting to, the, the certain Rebbe that started to put together the Seder plate, and it started, it, they said it from 1300 on, there was add ons and add ons and add ons. So they admit, you know, it's amazing when they admit they add and take away. When you add stuff, you take away the truth too. So there's add ons and add ons. But as you see here, here is, uh, are Sephardic plates, some of the ideas, you can actually go online and you can look at different um, meals of Sephardic or Falash or anybody else uh, that are celebrating the true understanding of Pesach. And of course, you see brother in this picture and at our table on the lower right, and uh, the lamb that was done at the ranch when we were there. Uh, we, we walked it through several years like that uh, because we nourished the lamb from one year old and up and prepared it, and just like the scriptures. And it's amazing that one of the brothers took the blood and put it on the doorpost of the doors of the, of the house. And the next morning, uh, the blood stains were completely gone. It, it disappeared. And blood doesn't do that. It stains. And uh, so th that's a spiritual, supernatural event we experience. We don't practice it. We just, we walked it through. We know Yahushua is our lamb, but we do the memorial and we do eat the lamb meat. Okay. So that's why I put that there for you. And as a remembrance, as a remembrance, as a remembrance, like the, the word literally the says to do it as, as a memorial, as a remembrance to Yahuwah. And even the the, the, Mashiach, the Messianics of Yemen, of, uh, the people that are from, uh, uh, that live in different parts of the land of Yasharel, right? And the Samaritans, which their real name are, the, the guardians of the Torah. And uh, they do, some of them believe in the Mashiach. And they still eat the lamb, just like us, okay? They have a big pits at feast and eat the lamb in memorial. So we continue to celebrate the memorial. And like I said before, I don't see no eggs. I don't see horseradish in there. <laughs> I see other type of herbs and spices, you know, from our homeland. And uh, so we just sharing this to to stir up and get ourselves together and ready. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the scriptures now. And we're gonna share and uh, we're going to start from, and if you get quick in to share, please feel free to tell me and I will go to the verses when you get quickened and we'll go to the verses together. Okay. Let me make it a little larger. And brother, when you read, just, you, want, you want to read from the scriptures or what? I'll read from the, I'll read from the screen. All right. Uh, starting with, with verse number one. Uh, and Yahuwah spoke to Moshe and to Aaron in the land of Mitzrayim, saying, This month is the beginning of months for you. It is the first month. It is the first month of the year for you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth day of this month, each one of them is to take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father a lamb for a household. Now, when it says that it's the beginning of months, it's talking about the beginning of months on the on the 
Yehudi or what what used to be the Hanuk calendar. I'm I, I, I'm I'm in. I believe that they still went back then by the only calendar that they knew of back then, and then is begin to change. Am I right or wrong about that, brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if they got the so, Dead Sea Scroll calendar, and uh, they translated to many languages, and they refused to change it, uh, the tradition of men. Like it says in the Brikadasha, uh, you you value the tradition of men more than the Torah of Moshe, you know? And, right. Yeah. So and so whenever I read this, where it says this month is the beginning of months for you, it is the first month of the year for you. So it reminds me uh, of Genesis. I of Bereshit. I put this together with Bereshit, where it says that that Yahuwah made the sun, the moon, and the stars as a sign, as signs and times for us, okay? So then uh, so then every year there are certain events that is going on in the sky above the earth that, that, that are used as markers. Some of those events have pagan names to them that we can recognize today, and those names are stuff like the winter solstice, the summer solstice, uh, the uh, the um, the um, autumnal equinox, and the vernal equinox. These are four different major times in the year. After each season, it's the seasons. It's the four seasons. So you got so in the calendar you got 30, 30, 31. We're talking about the calendar of Hanuk, which is what they were using at this time. Then you, you and and when you go when you go thirty days thirty days plus thirty one on that on that thirty first day on the the next day is the changing of the guard and and so the 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 celestial um um calendar change is changed now some of the stars that were there are no longer there they're they they've moved on so uh, and they're in another part of the earth so if you it, it's hard as to explain without me making a visual. But um, what I'm trying to say is this, that this would be springtime. And I know that we know this. We know this because, because the marker, the marker for, um, for uh, the beginning of spring is the, is, and it's called something different is in, in, in Hebrew, but so that you can understand, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what it is in 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 the today's vocabulary it's called the winter solstice and it's a day that the pagans um that the pagan mythology would worship okay their pagan sun it was a sun deity worship and and so this is where they get christmas from but it's actually a marker in time above the earth and so we know that 30 plus 30 plus 31 more days, boom, that's the marker for the beginning of the year. Now, Yahuwah saying, is saying this. So, so that's the marker for springtime. So if you count, if you look, if you type in Google and you Google, uh, and you go, you Google winter solstice, it's going to tell you that it, it, it happened in 2023 around the 22nd, the 21st, the 22nd. I, I haven't Googled it, so I don't know what it's going to tell you, but I can tell you more or less. It's either going to say the 21st or the 22nd of December. Okay, so if from the 21st or the 22nd of December, you begin to count 30 plus 30 plus 31 more days, boom, you're going to fall on the very first day of the year. And that's where he's talking about right here. This month is the beginning of months for you. It is the first month of the year for you. This is a marker. Now, I'd like to add something there, brother, if uh -huh. I may input there before we go to verse 4. They were in Egypt. And right. They were under the calendar and the aura, because the Egyptians created the aura. And then the Greeks right. and the Romans, and then the United, you know, moved on to Latin America and the United States. But um, he's telling them that they've been in a pagan calendar system in Egypt. Right. He says, right. so now this is the first. This is your, your this is your New Year's. You know what I right. mean? 
Exactly. And count 14 so, days. So now, now, now we're back in in a in a sun in a sun worship system because they say that the beginning of the year is January. Okay, is is was right after which is a which is completely pagan, which was made up by a pope. Okay, not by Yahuwah. So uh, so right now the, the the time is so far off, and every year we get even further off. But I digress. Let me let me just keep going. But right now, if you want to Google or after this, you want to Google uh, um, uh, winter solstice and then you begin to count 30, 30, 31, then you will land on the first day of the beginning of the year for you. Then you start counting 10. Then you start counting 15, 10 days. Uh, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten. That day is the day that they took the lamb. 13, 14. Uh, the uh, the 14th day is when they is when they uh, begin to uh, prepare the lambs and to cook them for the for the night between the so the 14th day was the day between the 13th and the 14th of the evening they, they begin to prepare the lambs the next day just like Yahushua. Same thing happened with Yahushua. They took Yahushua and they they celebrated the Pesach. Let me say that again. They celebrated the Pesach on the day on the uh, on the beginning of the fourteenth day, and then they and then they took him. Okay, but uh, but we're gonna we're reading it in 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 Exodus, so I, I, I'm gonna stay away from that for right now. But um, if you count ten days. And then you count the uh, to the fourteenth day, the fifteenth day. They put the they put the Passover lamb in the oven, and the next day, and they and they ate it that evening. And the next day or that evening, it began the um, the hamatza, and, and they ate and, with their loins girded about them and everything. And they left in the morning, or, or uh, the, as soon as daybreak came, boom, they were out of there. Okay, so let me keep reading uh, verse number. Um, Four. Verse number uh, four. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to, to his house take it according to the number of beings, according to each man's need. You, you make your count for the lamb. Let the lamb be a perfect one, without blemish, without any spot, okay, with without... Uh, um, 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 without any any imperfections, this was Yahushua without sin, completely without sin. This is a this is a this is really teaching Yahushua. It's all about Mashiach. It's all about Mashiach. And if if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of beings, according to each man's needs. You make your count for the lamb. Let the lamb be a perfect one, a year old male. It cannot be older than a year old. Okay, so let the lamb be a perfect one, uh, a year old male. Take it from the sheep or from the goats that are still innocent. They're still innocent at below one years old. Okay, they're still innocent. And if you shall keep it, un and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day. So now you've counted out your your uh, your 30, 30, 31, beginning from the from the from the uh, vernal equinox. It, it's a sign above in the Shamayim that Yahuwah put there so that you can know what the time is. It's a time clock. The the whole sky above you, above where the where the moon and the and the sun go around us is a huge time clock. You count 90, you count 91 days. And then you count 14 days right here. And you keep it until the 14th day. Then there was evening. And then there was morning. Okay. And you keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then all the assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it. When? Between the evenings. Okay, so Yahushua told his, his Talmudim, hey, we're going to eat the Passover tonight. Go to this pl certain place and get us this upper room. Okay, and, and so he did that on, they did that on the evening of the 14th. Okay, 
when the 14th day started or when it came to be evening, that 14th day, that yom, then they went ahead and they ate the Passover. Okay, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then all the assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it between the evenings, and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat. Now, like Brother was saying, we tried this, we killed the lamb, and we got the the um the um uh blood, and we and we didn't know we we were completely in a Innocent. We did. We we were excited. It was our very first. It was our very first. Um, um, yeah. Not uh, for for us. It was our very first. Uh, well, me and me and Frank were doing it. Oh. Me and Frank were doing. It. We. Uh, so it was our very first pesa, and we had never done the pesa before. But uh, we were excited, man. We're like, all right, we get to do the pesa. So we went and got a lamb, and we and we slaughtered that lamb. And we put the 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 blood in, in the uh, we held you know we actually did it and put the blood in the in the in the, like a stainless steel bowl, and then we took some of the blood and we put it over the doorposts and on the sides, and and um and uh, this true story. So so the next, so the next day we went to go look so we could wash the blood off or paint over or whatever we had to do. We went to go look and it was gone. It was gone. Hallelujah! We the blood is completely gone. I, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. I know it's, a, it was just a total miracle, you know, because we were innocent. We believe, you know, we were, we were, yeah, yeah, we're gonna do the, 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 the Passover. So we did everything that it says in the book to do. We did it. So, anyways, he says, speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, on the tenth day of this month. Okay, we went backwards. Let the lamb be a perfect one, a year old. Uh, you shall keep it until the 14th day, verse number seven, and they shall take some of the blood and um, they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. And they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Um, and I believe that the un, un, unleavened uh, bread and the bitter herbs. I don't know if you ever uh, in 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 the in the Hispanic culture we have uh, pan sin levadura. My mother used to make pan sin levadura all the time, which is which is unleavened bread. She it, it's uh, uh, she would make it a certain time of the year. Uh, back then we were uh, Catholicos, so she was making it during the uh, uh, the pagan Estarta day. OK, but but we having having uh, Hebrew roots didn't under, didn't hadn't made the connection yet. But anyways, um, so uh, if you eat this type of bread, it doesn't taste very, very good. It doesn't taste like the other bread. If you eat bitter herbs, it doesn't taste very good. It's for a remembrance of the harshness that they went through for uh, three or four generations. I believe it was four generations, 400 years. So it says, uh, uh, and do not eat it raw nor boiled at all with water, but roast it in fire, its head with its legs and its inward parts. Now, I do not have that revelation yet as far as exactly, maybe brother does, what it means by do not, well, I, I know what it means by do not eat it raw, but where it says nor boiled at all with water, and I, I, I'm, the only thing I can think of is that it's roasted in the fire because fire purifies. Okay, if 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 I were to eat any kind of meat uh, during during Pesah or from from Pesah to Shavuot, it would have to be roasted in fire, where the fire has purified the meat. For me to take it and put it into my body where the Ruach HaKodesh, which is Yahuwah, is living. Where Zion is sitting on the throne of my of my love is Yahuwah. Okay? So you got to pay attention. So the Torah is not done away with. The Torah is being fulfilled. It's there to be fulfilled, not done away with. Okay? Do not eat it raw, nor boiled with water, but roast it in fire. Its head with its legs, 
and its inward parts. And do not, 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 you can't gut it. You cannot gut it. Okay. Is is telling you at, at this time. Now you're not going to eat the inward parts either. You're going to burn all that stuff. Gets burnt on the altar, just like on the sacrifices. The sacrifice they would they would they would uh, take the the inward parts and they and they would burn it on the on the altar. Anyways, do not leave any of it until morning. And what remains until morning, if whatever does remain until morning, you are to burn with fire. And this is how you eat it. That when we experimented, and I know you experimented too, and had the same experience with the blood disappearing, and then um, when we when we uh, burnt it, we went out every few hours. One of us would go out, and uh, it would self consume. It's so the oils, the oils in the lamb burnt itself out. It burnt it, and. Uh, it kept burning. It was on fire. And then when it got to the place where it kind of was, and we, we put it, we kept bringing it closer and closer to the fire because we had a, a step metal where the bar on one side and the other, we would drop it down lower and lower. And, uh, and when it got to the place that it would fell out in the fire, we would pound it and by morning, it was buried. That was not even bones, Harley. It, when you start breaking it up, it just continues to burn. We didn't have to add fuel. We didn't have to create fuel. It burnt itself in, out. Okay. Uh, how did it happen with you guys, brother? With us, the way that it happened was um, we had a small, small baby lamb. It was little. And it burnt pretty fast, brother. It was, it was just, there was only a few of us. Like at the ranch, when we did it at the ranch with you guys, there was a lot of people there. Yeah. Uh, and so, and so it took a bigger one, but ours was a, a little baby one and it burnt out by itself in, in about, I mean, we, we ate and then um, we ate and, and, and it was between the evenings when we ate, it was actually already between, the, it was between the evenings when we started eating. So it, it was, it was right about to get dark. And then I'm guessing by by 10, 30, 11 o'clock, it, it had burnt out. We just threw it we threw it in the fire and Frank lit it up. I don't know how he lit it up, but the whole thing just burnt. And you're right. It, we didn't have to light, we didn't have to light anymore, throw gas or anything or, or 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 kerosene or nothing on the fire. It burnt by itself. Right. Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and read 11 then continue with 11. Okay. And this is how you eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on, on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Passover of Yahuwah, and I shall pass through the land of Mislaim on that night, and shall smite all the firstborn in the land of Mislaim, both man and beast, and all the mighty ones of Mislaim. I shall execute judgment. I am Yahuwah. And this is going to happen again. All right. This is going to happen. Yahuwah is going to pass judgment on all the other mighty ones who are not him, including all the Susas, all the, all the Jonas Susas and the Pegasuses and the Esuses and all the Susas. He's going to, he's going to um, uh, pass judgment on them and the people who are worshiping those, those things because they still have, because they refuse to accept Hamashiach and they still have the veil over their eyes and over their heart and their unbelief. And that is the truth. And that's what, why it's so important for us to spread the besota. Okay. But because by, by, by going, Oh, I don't want to say nothing because I don't want to offend them. We're actually, we're actually doing the opposite. We're actually hurting them by not saying nothing. Okay. So, and, and the reason that, that, um, that they had to, um, uh, Eat the eat it in haste is because man, I mean, I don't know about you, but I would want to get out of this slavery. I want to hurry up and get out of this slavery that I'm in. So, so and the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I shall pass over you and let the plague not come on you to destroy you when I smite the land of Misraim. So that's good. That that is um, you know, um, 
so when I read this, the Ruach of death came and it passed over them. They were not taken out of the plagues and out of the, the abominations that were happening, uh, that Yahuwah allowed to happen to these people for their unbelief. They, uh, uh, the Israelites had to go through it. Okay. So, so nobody was raptured here. There were no exceptions for anybody. You had to experience this. And it says, and this day, this day, it shall become a remembrance. It shall become to you a remembrance. I mean, how can you forget it? I mean, we got, we got the, um, we got the grim <laughs> reaper. Yeah, that's what this Malachim was. This Malachim was a grim, read the word. And especially when you read it in Hebrew, you'll find out that this thing was the reaper, man, the spirit of death. It literally caused it the spirit of death. It was a Malachim of death. And he was and he was going around reaping all the all the souls, okay. So so um and this day and so you I don't think that you would remember that right. I mean we don't. Uh, uh, that's why it's it, um it's it's so imprinted in our minds for us to do these uh these feasts because they are for everlasting, forever and ever. They're not just for one day or not just for that. Back then we're to do it as a remembrance. And this day shall become to you a remembrance. And you shall observe it as a festival to Yahuwah throughout your generations. Observe it as a festival, an everlasting law. Now, it's like I always say every year, everlasting, I equate that to forever. And we're and forever hasn't ended yet. We're still in forever. Okay, so we have to observe it as a festival, a festival and everlasting law. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Indeed, on the first day, you cause leaven to cease from your houses. Now, hmm, what does that mean? Well, this is the house of Yahuwah. Okay. So for seven days, I'm going to eat unleavened bread, and there will be nothing sinful entering my house. This is the ultimate house. You. You are the ultimate, not that building that they built down the street, or or not even the building in or the wall that's in Israel. Not even that. Not even that. But you have become the dwelling place of Yahuwah, the Mishkan. Okay? So, so for seven days, you're not going to allow any, because um, leaven, is, as we know, is puffed up and is a representation, representation of of sin, okay? So for seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Indeed, on the first day you cause leaven to cease from your houses. For whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that being shall be cut off from Israel. Cut off means put to death. There is no other way around it. It does not mean that you're going to get a spanking or a slap on the hand or you're going to be forgiven. That's not what it's saying. If you want to get on down to the main attraction, that's what it's talking about. Forever, for whoever eats unle whoever eats leaven, bread with sin, allows sin, for whoever allows sin from the first day unto the seventh day, that being shall be cut off. And on the first day is a set-apart gathering. It's a Kodesh day. And on the seventh day, right, it's a Shabbat. And on the seventh day, you have a set, uh, set another set apart gathering. Okay, so those are time markers. Those are markers in time. If you if you count fourteen days and the fifteenth day, it's a Shabbat because you're going to eat for seven days, and you're going <laughs> to it's going to be another Shabbat. Okay, there's no way around it. It cannot start. Um, uh, it cannot start at any other time. It has to start on the Shabbat, and it has to end on the Shabbat, because it says, "For whoever eats unleavened bread from the first day into the seventh day, that being shall be cut off." And on the first day is a set apart gathering. It's Kodesh. Okay, what's Kodesh? The Shabbat. It's a high and on Shabbat. the seventh day, yeah. and on this, huh? It's a high Shabbat. It's high. It's a, and, and on the seventh day, you have a set-apart gathering. 
No work at all is done on them. Only that which is eaten by every being, that alone is prepared by you. And you shall guard the festival of Hamatzah, unleavened bread, for on the same day I brought your divisions out of the land of Mizraim. And you shall guard this day throughout your generations and everlasting law. Hallelujah. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, in the evening, um, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day. So it's giving you specific days. It's not, it's not just, just, it's giving you specific days. Let me read that again. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, in the evening, it's very clear. It's very clear. You shall eat un unleavened bread until when? The 21st day. That's seven days. Count them. That's seven days. Seven days. He's repeating. Until, he keeps repeating. Yeah. Yeah, he so it's a it's a, it's, a, it's literally I'm gonna tell you what this is. This is literally a calendar. <laughs> in the it's verifying a calendar. It says it says in the evening you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day. So you start on the 14th day between the evenings. Okay. And and on the month and it says and, and until the 21st day of the month in the evening. For seven days, no leavened bread is to be found in your houses. For if anyone eats what is leavened, that same being shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether sojourner or native of the land. Do sojourners not too. Right, sojourners too. So Sojourners who, uh, uh, okay, but you're going to see, it is sojourner. There, there are sojourners, but these sojourners have, have, uh, become Israelites. Okay, they 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 have become Israelites. They back then, they, what were they doing to them? They were the they were doing the Brit Milah. Okay, Wait, how do you say that, brother? The Brit Milah. You have to have. Uh, you have to, the circumcision. They were doing right. the circumcision. That's right. Okay, so that was part of becoming a an Israelite. You had to do the Brit Milah. So, so they, they have to cut the foreskin. Do not eat that which is leavened in all your dwellings. You are to eat unleavened bread. You are to be Kodesh. 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 Okay? You are to be Kodesh. Do not eat that which is leavened in all your dwellings. You are to eat unleavened bread. And Moshe, <clears throat> and that's the heart of the, that's the heart of, of the of the feast is to become Kodesh, like Yahushua. Okay, and Moshe called for the for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go out and take uh, take lambs for yourselves according to your clans and slaughter the Passover lamb. Stop and there for a minute. Out. So I just want to let you know that where it says sojourners, it's Gerd. It's a Germanite. Plural and ger. It's not goy. It's, it's ger. Uh, it's the same name of one of the sons of Moshe. Right. right. Stranger. Sojourner. So uh, he's telling them that they're supposed to practice the same thing and do everything the same as one that's homegrown born, Israel, because they're being grafted in. Okay, I'm sorry. Keep going. And you shall take a bunch of high stuff. And dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel on the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And you, none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. And Yahuwah shall pass on to smite the Mizraites and shall see the blood on the lintel and the two doorposts. And Yahuwah shall pass over the door and not allow the destroyer. That's that Malachim we're talking about. The, 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 the Malachim is a destroyer to come into your houses, into this house. So Hasatan is not able to destroy this house. Okay. Let's see Why? what it said. Let's see what it says in Hebrew, the word destroyer. Let's see what it is in Hebrew for fun. Okay. Let's see what okay. it says here. It is, uh, it's the word. 
Shaka. Shaka. It's a sh- shata. Ah, is, is the word for sin. Shaka. And these are all the locations. Destroyer, destroyed, destroyed, corrupt, corruption, destroying, destroyer, mar. Right. So, so there is a verse. I, I, no, it may not be in, 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 in Exodus, maybe in Deuteronomy, but I know I've read it before where it, where it says that it is the, the, the spirit of death. It's called right. it, it is a malakim. It is a spirit. That's what, that's what malakims are. Now, which kind it is, I'm not sure, but it's been directed to do, to carry out. It's obeying Yahuwah. And carrying, carrying, he's whoever this malakim is or spirit is, is obeying Yahuwah and doing. It's made for this purpose in doing this destruction. Okay, and it says, um, "You shall guard this word as a law for you and your sons forever, forever." There's the word forever again, forever. So we're still in forever, and it shall be when you come to the land which which Yahuwah gives you, and he, as he promised that you shall guard this service. So we are in the land of our, right now, of our soul journey. We've been placed here. We didn't have a choice. We were born right here. So even in this land, it says that you shall guard this service. You shall do it, whether you're here or in Israel. And it shall be when your children say to you, what does this service mean to you? Then you shall say, it is the Pesach. The Passover slaughtering of Yahuwah, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel, who spared us. He, literally, he spared us, okay, in Mizraim, when he smote the Mizraites and, the, and delivered our households, and the people bowed their heads and did uh, obeisance. And the children of Israel went away and did so as Yahuwah had commanded Moshe and Aaron, so they did. Verse number 29. And it came to be at midnight that Yahuwah smote all the firstborn in the land of Mizraim, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on the throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of, of livestock. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Mizraites, and there was a great cry in Mizraim, for there was not a house where there was not a dead one. Then he called for Moshe and Aaron by night and said, Arise, go out from the midst of my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go serve Yahuwah as you have said. Take both your flocks and your herds as you have said, and go then, uh, and go. Then you shall Baruch me too. And the Mizraites urged the people to hasten to send them away out of the land, for they said, we are all dying. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, having their kneading bowls bound up in their garments and on their shoulders. And the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moshe. And they had asked from the Mizraites objects of silver and gold and garments. And Yahuwah gave the people favor in the eyes of the Mizraites, so that they gave them what they asked, and they plundered the Mizraites. And the children of Israel set out to Ramesses and to Sukkot about 600,000 men on foot. These were the heads of the family. So if you take 600,000 men on 600,000 men, and each one of them has a, a household, and let's say each one of them back then they were having, you know, multiple kids. There wasn't like one or two like today. I mean, I'm sure there was there was four, five, six, ten, ten kids or more per household. So this is a lot of people. A mixed multitude went up with them too. Also flocks and herds, very much livestock. They baked unleavened cakes of dough, which they had brought out of Mislain, for it was not leavened since they were driven out of Mizraim and had not been able to delay, nor had they prepared food for themselves. And the sojourn of the children of Israel who lived in Mizraim was 430 years. 
And it came to be at the end of the 430 years on the same day, it came to be that all the divisions of Yahuwah went out from the land of Mizraim. And it is a night to observe unto Yahuwah for, for bringing them out of the land of Mizraim. Okay, it, uh, so nowhere in here is Christmas uh, to be to be observed, but this night is a night to be observed. If you're going to observe any nights, it's going to be this one that Yahuwah has commanded us to observe. It is a night to, to be observed unto Yahuwah for bringing them out of the land of Mizraim. So they were going out of bondage into freedom. They were going from bondage to freedom, and they were observing that night. Okay, it is a night to be observed that this night is unto Yahuwah to be observed by all the children of Israel throughout their generations. Hallelujah. This is verse number 43. And Yahuwah said to Moshe and Aaron, this is the law of the Passover. No, no son of a stranger, which is a sojourner, is to eat of it. But it, and so if you're no longer a sojourner if you've been if you've been grafted in, okay, if, if back then, if you did all the things you're supposed to do and, and uh, go to the Brit Milah and all these other, all this stuff that makes that, that seals the covenant, then, then um, you're no longer a stranger. It this, says, is not true. this is actually a different word. Uh, this stranger uh, is a nukur, which means, a foreigner, alien, one that's not being grafted. He's he's hanging out, but he's not crafting in yet. He's just hanging out. Because maybe maybe what if the sojourner was a servant of Israelites? Because servants of Israel, you're going to see had servants, and some of them want to graft in, and some were hesitant. And and in Israel, they call that today uh, nogor, a nogor. Someone that is, or Nikar, someone that's still practicing stuff they shouldn't. You know what I mean? It's not a Gur or a Goy, it's a Nikar. No Gur, in Nikar, Nikar, okay? So a heathendom, alien stranger. So it's a little different. Uh, it shows it more in Hebrew than English. But look at 44 is the main one. It, it really... Uh, but any servant a man has bought for silver, when you have circumcised him, then let him eat of it. So there's the brit milah, when you have circumcised him. A sojourner and a hired servant does not eat of it. It is eaten in one house. You are not to take any of the flesh outside the house, nor are you to break any bone of it. Of course, Yehoshua, on the, on the stake on the tree did not have any bones broken. All the congregation of Israel are to perform it. Verse number 48. And when a stranger sojourns with you and shall perform the Passover to Yahuwah, let all his males be circumcised and let him come near and perform it. And he shall observe, and he shall be as a native of the land but let no uncircumcised eat of it. There is one Torah for the native. There is one Torah for the native born and for the stranger who sojourn who sojourns among you. And all the children of Israel did as Yahuwah commanded Moshe and Adon, so they did. And it came to be on the same night that Yahuwah brought the children of Israel out of the land of Mizraim according to their divisions. Hallelujah. And we know that, and we know that uh, the, the Egyptians circumcised their sons. So these, so these certain groups that were in Israel with the Israelites were probably servants and slaves themselves of another race of people and some of them didn't believe in circumcision but the circumcision was the the thin line from eating the lamb you had to you do do now the, i i wonder where these people were or they were not the first born uh that cleaved uh to the houses of israel because 
I mean, you know, say I was a, a, a girl or a Goreem, and Israel's putting blood on their doorpost, and they're saying, we're going to eat lamb here. Well, can I hang out with you behind the door? I might be, I'd be able to eat a lamb, but I, can I be with you inside the room behind the blood? <laughs> you know what I mean? So they were well, there in the house protected from the, the death messenger. You know what I mean? The, the doorpost of our heart, the doorpost of the doorway, the gateway of those houses protected anybody in the house. But once they did do repeat the, the Passover, which was the next following year, it's just the scriptures preparing it for the next year. All those sojourners got to be circumcised or men they want to eat if they want to partake. In the beginning, all they had to do is be behind the blood doorposts in the house. The second time they're going to have to eat, they're going to have to get circumcised to eat the lamb. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. 13 1. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Set apart to me all the firstborn, the one opening the womb among the children of Israel and among man and among beasts. It is mine. The uh, And Moshe said to the people, Remember this day in which you went out of Mizraim, out of the house of slavery, for by strength of hand, Yahuwah brought you out of this place. And whatever is leavened, shall not be eaten. Today you are going out in the month of Abib. All right, and it shall be when Yahuwah brings you into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, which he swore to your fathers to give you a land flowing with milk and honey that shall keep this, that you shall keep this service in this month. Verse 6. Uh, seven, seven days. Seven days you eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day is a festival to Yahuwah. Unleavened bread is to be eaten the seven days. It doesn't say that the seventh day is a, is a, is a festival to the Jews. No, it's a festival to Yahuwah. It belongs to Yahuwah. Unleavened bread is to be eaten the seven days, and whatever is leavened, it is not to be seen with, with you. And leaven is not to be seen with you within all your border, and you shall inform your and you shall inform your son in that day, saying, It is because of what Yahuwah did for me when I came up from Mizraim, and it shall be as a sign to you on your hand, and as a reminder between your eyes that the Torah of Yahuwah is to be in your mouth. For with a strong hand, Yahuwah has brought you out of Mizraim, and you shall guard this law at, at its appointed time from year to year. And it shall be when Yahuwah brings you into the land of the Canaanites as he swore to you and your fathers and gives, to, gives it to you, that you shall pass over to Yahuwah, everyone opening the womb and every firstborn that comes from your livestock, the males belong to Yahuwah. But every firstborn of a donkey, you are to ransom with a lamb. And if and if you do not ransom it, then you shall break its neck. And every firstborn of man among your sons, you are to ransom. Hallelujah. Now, you know, before we go to 14, I've always questioned, as I even shared it years ago, that we were up in Eagles Haven, uh, that um, this is not practice among rabbinical Judaism to ransom their firstborn son. Uh, they might give gifts and stuff like that, but especially among us that are being grafted in to be aware that our firstborn son of a man among your sons, you are to ransom. It, 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 the firstborn sons supposed to be ransom, even your animals, Everything. your donkeys. They're supposed to be an offering, a gift, right, unto Yahuwah for the firstborn of male. So, and, uh, you know, I, I never done it because I didn't know better. And I asked the Father to forgive me. You know what I mean? Uh what would have happened if we knew better? 
What would have happened to our firstborn sons if we knew that we're supposed to give an offering to Yahuwah for our firstborn son when they were born? Would their lives been different? We don't know. But this is a, this is a right rule. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and of course, I, I'm not going to have no more children, but if I was able to do it, I would start practicing it right away, giddy up. You know what I mean? Because it says here to do it. Um, do you have any opinion on that before we go to verse 14? Um, it's just, um, you know, if you didn't ransom your son, well, you, uh, then, then he belonged to Yahuwah. What does that mean? Like a dedication, like uh, yeah, that like like Samuel, like Shmuel, he he belonged to Yahuwah, so his mother went and gave him to the to the uh, to the local um, uh, temple or whatever it is that that where all the um, where the all the priests the 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 Kohanim. So he was dedicated to to Abba, and I think that that. Um, by keeping this law, I mean, yeah, I think that 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 uh, we wouldn't have gotten into all the trouble that we got into. Now, know? the other thing is that it, 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 we're going to, we're, we're, you know, we find out later where they're going through the 40 years in the wilderness, that in the beginning part, he wanted every firstborn son not only be ransomed, but to become levy. But because they didn't want, they didn't want to. It divided up to the house of Levi and the Zador Koani house only. But every firstborn son from every house was supposed to be dedicated to Yahuwah. That's right. You know That's what I right. mean? That's exactly what it's saying. So if you're not going to give your son to Yahuwah, then you have to bring something in place of your son. So. Yeah. Uh, so just think about Mashiach. I mean, so it's required of me to be Kodesh in order for me to move on to the next life, okay, into the reign of Yahuwah. But instead of, but uh, my my life was ransomed by Yahushua HaMashiach, by the blood of the Lamb. I mean, that to me, that's the most significant thing that that we miss when we're reading this is that is that Yahushua is the first he's the first born of the Ruach HaKodesh he's the first born from above yeah okay and and he was ransomed as a ransom for all of us that's, that's where right. this ran that's for the for that's where this ransoming comes from so um so most uh uh Christians do not see what we're seeing right now because the veil is still over their hearts and their minds. So they can't see this. Even or though, also, uh, also the Hatsutan has, has diverted it or put their eyes when they're born and their babies, they get water immersed. They get water baptized into the Circe from birth, but, you know, right. Uh, which Jesuits say, you give me your children, I'll have them forever. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they put the the ritual of the cow, the rite, right, R-I-T-E, on the children. So they're stealing that understanding with a fake baptism, you know? Right. But Yahuwah, I mean, you know, sent Yahushua to save us from that. Because right. I mean, we were all there. And so, but now we're, we're no longer there. We're here now. So, um, so we've been redeemed. Okay, now think about that. Think about that word. What does that mean that we have been redeemed? Well, we've been brought back to Yahuwah. So in order for us to be redeemed, redeemed, we have to have once been. You cannot redeem something you've never had. That's right. Okay, so 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 that's why you have to have a munah. Listen, listen, listen. So so um Yahuwah made me realize. That all of us who have been called to, uh, and we know the name, and at one time in your life, at some point, your family was part of the house of Israel somewhere. And you have to believe that. You, that's, I don't have to believe that for you. No one can make, no one can make 
anyone believe that for you. Now, when you when you're able to believe that, it changes the whole ball game. The whole ball game is changed because of your imunah. Okay, and you begin to realize who you are, and you have purpose in Yahuwah. So you know that's why they don't want you to know this. They don't want you to know this stuff because, and then it gives you it gives you the ability to say, "Oh no, I'm from the house of Israel." You you hear what I'm saying? So so you know I don't know if you understand this or not, but people who have a veil will not understand what I'm saying. So you. In order to be redeemed, you had to have once been. And, right. you know, I, it, it, so so my my thinking goes, okay, well, well, it doesn't matter who you are. Yahuwah loves you, and and and, and I believe in him, and Yahuwah loves, I, I love Yahuwah, and he loves me, and I believe in him. I, I have emunah, I believe in, in Yahuwah, uh, and, and so, um, so, uh, if you believe in Yahuwah, then Yahuwah says that he's redeeming you. So if Yahuwah is redeeming you, you must believe that your family somewhere down the line once was. You cannot have you cannot have both at the same time. And if you get grafted in, you have to have Omana enough to step forward. Because, and let's face it, everybody. If I want to eat lamb or Peshach, and I'm not circumcised. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to sacrifice something. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm gonna do some serious sacrificing, right? Pay the penalty, right? And so now, also, the problem we have is that, and you know, a lot of us struggle with it. I struggle with it until the father rebuked me three times, just like Abraham, just like Yaakov. He sent people to me to tell me, and these were in Israel and, and in the United States, your name is Eliyahu. That's your name. The Father told me to tell you that. Okay? But I wouldn't say it because uh, I think people are going to say I'm going too far. <laughs> but what about your, your family lineage? You know what I mean? No. We're getting back on track. If you remember right, a lot of our family coming here one way in the boat or through a Spanish boat or an English British boat. Either way, they spelled our names wrong when we got off the boat. <laughs> That's what they said. They recorded it. They said everybody's name was spelled wrong because whoever was doing the writing in their culture wrote it down. So um, we're going back to our, our what we call our root names. And the father gives us a spiritual name that we take on. And it's a Hebrew, Yasharel, everlasting name. And it takes a lot for the women and men that come out, or some of us are born, let's face it, some of us are born with Yehudi names. It's great when a guy's yeah. name is Matanyahu, and a guy's name is Yamadikos, and a, guy, a girl's name is Meriim. You know what I mean? It's great when they, had, they were born into it because they're Christian parents had enough of her, uh, Emona to take a name out of the word. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they, they could take on that name. But to the to the to our work, our comrades, people that work, our family, oh, his name is this now. Oh, he's no longer this, he's this. And they really try to work curse you back. Oh, man, you know, you always be this to me. You'll never be, I don't know what Eliyahu is. That's the earth. That's the spirit of the death talking, you know? Anyway, right. let's keep reading 14 on. We're almost done. Okay. It says, and it shall be when your sons ask you in the time to come, saying, what is this? Then you shall say to him, by the by strength of hand, Yahuwah brought us out of, out of Mishraim, out of the house of bondage. And it came to be when Pharaoh was too hardened to let us go, that Yahuwah killed every firstborn in the land of Mizraim, but the firstborn of man, and the first, both, both, the firstborn of man, and the firstborn of beasts. Therefore, I am slaughtering to Yahuwah every male that opened the womb, but, but every firstborn of my sons I ransom. And wow. it shall be, 
There, uh, okay, so let me read that again. Let me read that again. Therefore, I am slaughtering to Yahuwah every male that opened the womb, but every firstborn of my sons I ransom. This again is Hamashiach. Okay, because every male that every male that, that, that opens the womb, every which means every firstborn. And it shall be as a sign on your hand and on as frontness between your eyes. For by strength of hand, Yahuwah Yahu brought us out of, out of Mizraim. Now, let me just say this, that if you don't have Mashiach, you cannot ransom your sons. Because there's nothing to ransom him with, ransom them with. Go, go on, uh, but that's the last verse. Oh, that was the last verse? Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to put that out there. That's what good. do you think about that? Yeah, because they, you know, we know that they're they might read the Torah of Moshe, surrounded by the Mishnah and the Sanhedrin and all the sages around each verse at a time, but they're not getting the right picture. They because they don't even they won't even you know uh, some of the some of the beliefs system sect of Israel in Israel today do still slaughter the lamb and eat, eat it with meat. You know, some do. And then you got another European ones, they they cut a chicken's head off and sprinkle blood. <laughs> yeah. Now, where in the hell they get that from? That sounds like witchcraft to me. Kabbalah, you know? That's what it is. Yeah. That's and exactly they, they, what it is. And they, they and I, I heard of a guy, he showed a video, a guy cut the chicken's head off and put the blood in a basin and tried to give him a fortune tell, you know, and this was a rabbinical Talmud, you know, rabbi. So uh, every sect is different, but the majority, they have changed the Torah to fit their Judaism their belief system out of the Torah of Moshe, taking out and adding two scriptures. Right. And so they're the first to take out and add two before Christianity. You know what I mean? They were the very first. So uh, it's just the sinful religious nature of them to try to shoehorn their European belief system to an, uh, an ancient understanding of what was written in the scriptures. Now, one of the, I'll say this, all right, every male, okay, the, the sons would ask, this is the second time, the, the son shall ask, and it shall be when your son asks you in a time to come. Now, we know in verse, in chapter 24, 12, the same verse was there, and your son shall, Son, ask you in the time to come, saying, what is this? Now, what they practice on this, they find a boy in the group in the house. Okay, your hey, uh, brother, your, grand, your son's big enough to do it, or your grandson's big enough to do it, and they tell him what to say. And as they're doing the Besak meal, they tell the boy to stand up, and he stands up and asks, and we ask the questions by what means is all this taking place why are we at, why are we practicing the pesha why are we dressed up to go with canes in our hands why are we shoes on our feet ready to go so they add this to the seder plate right right they school their children to ask the question it's not an inspired it is a provoked, educated ceremony of tradition to ask the question. It's not like we're all sitting there and somebody, one little boy in the group, he says, you know, I, I'm coming here with my dad and, he, you know, I'm learning this new way, but why are we doing this? No, they, they create an actor of one of the sons to do it during, because we used to do it when we practiced the rabbinical Pesach, you know what I mean? We used to fight a boy, one of the boys to do it and to ask the question. So does anybody want to unmute your mic 
please do and share. Yeah, I'll share a verse. Okay, it's what verse? The first Corinthians chapter five, verse seven. All right, let me go to it. Well, brother, I've been in that book. Go for it. Therefore, cleanse out the old leaven so that you are a new lump as you are unleavened. For also Mashiach, our Pesach, was offered for us. Hallelujah. 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 That's awesome. That's an awesome verse. The next verse is still good. Yeah. Great. So then let us observe the festival not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of evil and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Hallelujah. 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 Great verses, brother. Anything else you want to add? Oh, no, that, that was, uh, I'll, let, I'll let other people share it. Um, thought that was a good one. You know, just praying for everybody to have a very tov Pesach. And I, I got off work, so I'm excited. I'm ready to, to tribute to our Mashiach and hopefully uh, bring some other people, let them experience it. And oh, just great, brother. And get better every year. That's so, right. Yeah. Every year is, a, is an exciting new one to get better and better, inviting people. So this is this is um, you know I, I hope everybody shares something because I mean this is a um, a great festival I mean it's one of the it, it is the beginning of our journey with Yahuwah. it really is it, it really is I mean I mean uh, once you start doing this you're already you're already doing the Shabbat and everything and, and I, um, I don't know who was here earlier and who wasn't when we were talking about the um, about all the important feasts and 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 about the Sabbath and all that, but um, this is this is really uh, part of your uh, coming into the house of Israel and becoming uh, an Israelite, because that's what you that's you are being redeemed, not back into Christianity or into or into Judaism or bap or being a Baptist or a Catholic or whatever. You're being grafted into the house of Israel. Hallelujah. I mean, all the sojourners, that's exactly what they did first. Yeah. Es escaped to those houses. Say, man, I'm getting behind the blood, man. I'm going to go hang out with these Israelites. I'm not going to yeah. let my firstborn son die, you know. Oh, by the way, I'm a firstborn son, too. And me and my boy are going. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. You know. Easter is, um, I think at this point, it's pretty common knowledge that Easter has pagan roots. You know, you don't have to dig too deep. I mean, Google, a Google search will, 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 you know, get you started with that. And um, I, I think that needs to be an eye opener for people. And then as far as when they discover that, of, well, if I'm not going to celebrate this because it's pagan, what am I supposed to do? And that's, that's where these celebrations like Pesach come in where it, you always should have, you know, held Pesach and not the easiest story. Right, not the other beasts. Yeah. Yeah, brother, but a lot of people still have the blinders on, you know, like it says in Corinthians right there where you're at, you know, uh, uh, in chapter three, it talks about the veil, about them having still, the veil is still on. It's still covering them. Even when the when the uh, Torah is read and and you see like right now we can see Mashiach, we're seeing Mashiach in the feast, right? Everybody sees Mashiach, right? Right. Right. Okay. Well, well, they can't see that. They don't. They they have a veil over their heart. They have a veil over their minds. They're not able to see Mashiach, and so they I'll go ask on. People, do I'll ask people. Well, like why they you know they'll ask like well why do you not uh you know acknowledge easter hold easter and it's like well did you know that the bunny rabbit is an unclean animal in the book leviticus why would we ever associate an unclean animal with our savior it doesn't it doesn't reconcile there's all these little things that hopefully can pull at people's heartstrings of like hey how, that doesn't make sense why, why would 
why would Yahushua be associated with a with a bunny rabbit? And then Leviticus it says we're not supposed to eat a, an animal like a bunny rabbit; it's unclean. And yeah, and everybody with common sense knows that bunny rabbits don't lay eggs. Anybody else? Please add your input, or ask questions, or share. You know, I think about I think about the um, the fact that he said, "If if you would seek me and really desire me, like desperately want to know me, you know, Abraham he he had you know Torah, his dad who had all the idols and all that business, but I know he he grew up with um, Noah and Sham and the and the maybe the even the cave of treasures. Who knows? I often wondered about that, but." You know, he says in Yeremiah that he would write it on the tables of our hearts. So if if they're not crying out, in other words, if they're comfortable and they're really doing great without much discomfort or feeling like something's missing in what they're doing, then we can't convince them. And Yahweh is like, they're not hearing me. And I know he pours into those who seek him with all their lab, with all their strength, you know, uh, in that nefash, um, in that inner man and crying out and he he promises if we do that he will come he searches our hearts and he knows how sincere and genuine we are and if we really 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 mean it then's the time for visitation and he says you know if you don't have it you can pray for it you can say why am i not you know if, if these people are coming out and they're all starting to walk in these uh fit and then the shabbat and in the festivals at least they could say is there something to it rather than putting up this wall saying, oh, it's the great falling away or whatever uh, antage that they want to use where the scriptures have been twisted and keep and prevent themselves from looking further, you know, for discomforts or whatever. But anyway, he did say he would write it on our lab and, and it would be like a new thing uh, where they physically came out, but he would call us out within ourselves and say, you know, I have a desire to not be a part of this to, to, you know, like yes, Yahoo. when he said, "Ugh, you know, I am just so unclean and everyone around me, I just have to get out of this place. I have to come out of where I'm at. I have to be separated out, you know, and, and, um, I wonder if there's not, uh, dimensions on this earth that his people go into because whenever the mask rituals were going on, you know, to bring in the avatars and, and give up our own identities, and that huge worldwide, you know, global, whatever, you know, not global, but the the, the world, um, earthwide peoples were all masking at the same time. I didn't want to be a part of that. And I said, I'm not going to be a part of this ritual. I'm not, I'm not only, I already have my owl, you know, and he would seem like make me invisible, like they would be passing out masks. You can't go into certain uh, stores and they, I could walk right past them and come out. So I wonder if we're not, we don't have that also like a, a frequency or you know, like a, a, like a dimension on this earth that we could just not be seen. Maybe that's why Yoshua wasn't thrown off the cliff when they wanted to do that. He just walked, walked through them. You know, what is the prevention? I know when Lot was removed, um, the Malkin blinded their eyes and they just walked right through them. You know, they just couldn't see them. And so I wonder what that really looks like. Um, just thinking about all that, and it, it ties in with Pesach, you know, first time that physically, how much, I mean, we're physical now, the great coming out, but it's so much more an internal coming out, a, a, an, an ang um, like an aching to find what is missing, what am I looking for, what do I need, and then when it comes, it's like, that's exactly what i've been hunger hungering for he gives us the appetite the desire and then fulfills it when we cry out for it mm -hmm. that's right well I'm, I'm i'll say this that i mean um just think about the belief that you have to have to you know realize that that um somewhere back in your lineage you mm -hmm. i mean you're being redeemed and and you look around and you see all these people who don't who uh don't want to go the way that you're going. I mean the 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 way I mean the road is narrow. I mean it's not it's not wide. It mm -hmm. is narrow. So uh, I mean just think about 
about the emunah that you have to have and that you you know or, or, or Yahuwah allows us to have in order so that we so that, you know in order for us to believe that that we our ancestors were actually there think about that but somewhere back in the day your ancestor was actually there yes you, you yeah. know i mean i mean you if you can't believe that you can't enter everything's about belief mm -hmm. you know so if you're being redeemed redeemed mm -hmm. brought back now, you can't be brought back to something you've never been to. So it wasn't you that was there, but it's your ancestors who live inside of you. It's the DNA that's handed down from generation to generation to generation to generation. And you know, who knows who we are? Mm -hmm. okay? And we're from yeah. all walks of life, all walks of life. You know, who is no respecter of man? You, we, can, we can wonder about all this stuff. You know all we want to, but the 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 fact is is that Yahuwah chose us. Mm -hmm. Yahuwah chose us. We didn't choose he him. He called called us. Yes, he, yeah, he called, called us. us. It's not because of it's not because of me. It's because of, because of him. Yeah. And we and we think of um, the indigenous people here. You know that a lot of us. Have, I do. My great great grandmother was almost a full blooded. Um, I think Cherokee creek mix and um so you know and they've been proven that those were hebrew israelites you know with um the fringes and and a lot of the ways that they did and the things that they said and even i think they called him like watanka and stuff and they had all these names that were really very much hebrew you know so you wonder uh, my mom she's a phillips but what what and they say that they were the horse people of the indigenous people, but, you know, going back. So I probably got it from there. But I wonder, though, if you have like seven siblings, why why aren't we all, if it's in our DNA, inclined to maybe it's just not quite time. And well, that, 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 is, that, that is something that I, that I always ask, too. I ask that same question. Why out of all nine of us? Mm -hmm. Why, Abba, is it just me? What about mm -hmm. my brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. and I have eight Abba, brothers and sisters, or seven brothers. There was eight of us. Yeah, just like you. Right. It's like a big, a big group of them. You know. Right. So, but you know what? You, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like Yahushua said when they told him, "Hey, your your mom and your sister, your brothers are here," and he mm -hmm. said, he "said you're my brother, you're my sister, you're my mother." And do the were, will of my father. He, yeah, to do the will those, of his father. Right. Those, those do his to Torah. Yes, didn't know his ways. Well, my youngest brother, who is now preceded as well, Malcolm, and I know, you know, y'all have probably prayed for him because ever since I've, I've mentioned him, he has passed on and he was very much uh, full on with this as well. And just... 100% changed and, and cleansed and set apart, you know, uh, and so praise Abba. And, you know, the others are still breathing, so. <laughs> yeah, you know, you got to realize, too, when you look at the scriptures, you'll see certain Nabi and all their sons and daughters do not, were not right. One or two or just mm -hmm. one out of a batch would mm -hmm. follow the steps of the Nabi. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing why that works. And this was that back then, too. You know, one takes the inheritance spiritually. Studying earlier this week, um, and it led up to the Pesach. Um, <coughs> it's called the Judas kiss. Uh, and the Dalit and the Damu. Um, so... The saying goes like this, that rotten fruit will fall by itself. And then I got Deuteronomy 32 and 35, where Yahuwah says, vengeance is mine and recompense. Their foot shall slip in due time for the day of their calamity is at hand and the things to come hasten upon them. So as I was studying this, I also got, you know, watching out for the serpent in the garden the wheat from the tares, pruning to grow in Yahusha. Yahusha is the vine. We are the branches. It says also that your own enemies are within our own household. 
the wolves in the sheep's clothing and that the feasts are like checkpoints um meaning that you know Yahuwah knows who is his and who is you know who's is not his um so with that verse uh, with with that uh study you know it says here on mark uh, chapter 14 verse 43 uh, it says, and immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the 12 with a great multitude with swords and clubs came from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now his betrayer had given them a signal saying, whomever I kiss, he is the one sees him and lead him away safely. And uh, as soon as he had come immediately, he had run up to him and said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid their hands on him and took him. So even when Yahusha sat at the table on the feast of, of Pesach, his his own enemy was there. Right. And so having to you know, when we partake in Yahuwah's feast, these are like checkpoints to see who is of Yahuwah and who is not of Yahuwah. And he knows by our fruits and who partake in his feast. And and it's almost like it, when we're going into the realms of the supernatural, because Yahuwah brings us in from the east, the north, the west, and the south to become a cod with him and to be uh to you know to be before him in reverence to be kadosh to be an emet in and in ruach because Yahuwah is ruach and emet so aligning like the seven kokavim that he holds in his hand and he blew his ruach upon all those during the feast time and having the damu on our left and our name found in the book of high kadosh 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 for you yahua i mean kadosh 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 for you yahua worthy is yeah, the know. lamb to be praised <laughs> Hallelujah. Worthy is the land to be praised. Who is worthy to open the scroll? Hallelujah, Hallelujah Yahuwah. Who shed his blood for me? Who had Rachamin on the day that he the day that he saved me? The day that he he asked me if I believed. So I partake in this feast and I humble myself before the great and awesome, the creator of all, in all, and for all, who lives forever and ever and ever. Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh to my creator, my savior, Yahuwah and Yusha. May he bestow upon all of his children more and more hakma, more and more of his anointed oil and lead us and guide us away from the enemy, from our enemies, because whoever is the enemy of Yahuwah is my enemy and who is the friend of the world is an enemy of Yahuwah. So we partake in this great feast that is upon us and it is rising. The confirmation are checkpoints in him. This is a checkpoint. Who are his? He's and, and Yahushua said that my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So as we walk into this feast, we baruch his kodeshim and everything and all things in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach. Amen. 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 Thank you, sister. Appreciate amen. that. Hallelujah. Abia, well, on that Abia note, wants I to add to you that. Oh. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Abia? Yeah. I just want to add to it because, uh, you know, as we uh, 
do the Pesach, the Passover. Passover actually is the memorial to uh, memorial of Yahushua's death. And uh, as we partake on that and understand it, that the Father has given us this uh, appointed times of Yahuwah, which it says in uh, Wayikra in Leviticus 23. These are the shadow picture of the redemption of Israel. So I just want to share that. And this is the plan of redemption by the death of our Mashiach Yahushua and the matzah, which is the matzah, which is the unleavened bread. The, you know how the Jewish people get so crazy and cleaning up their home about the, the, um, the bread around, you know, cleaning like spring cleaning, but actually it's the heart of the people that needs to be clean. The leaven bread, the, the leavening in our heart needs to be taken out. Hallelujah. So I just want to share that. Uh, that in, uh, like I said, in Waikra 23, it tells about the appointed times of Yahuwah. And the enemy is trying to twist us or... or the enemy tried to uh, to fool us, or, or that all these pagan uh, holidays that people are doing it just blinds you, just like Brother uh, Sapanya was saying. You know, the blinders. We have to pray for the people to remove that blinders in their eyes, so they can receive the true name of Yahuwah and Yahushua, and to really do the real. Feast appointed time of Yahuwah. I mean, Hallelujah. I want to share a song. Hallelujah. Yeah, want to share a song before we close in prayer. This is a simple song that I wrote, but it says, "Set me free." Hallelujah. Yeah.
set me free set me Hallelujah, sister. That was beautiful. Yes. Hallelujah. Can we close this out in prayer, brother, please? Abba, yeah, we ask that you be with us as we go throughout the week. <clears throat> we give you great esteem, and we thank you for this for this Yom, this Shabbat, and for the beginning of Hamatzah, um, for the Pesah. We give you great esteem, Abba. We thank you for being part of of um of your house Abba, and that you have chosen us is an honor Abba, that you have made us to know your name to esteem you for the veil to be lifted off our heart and our eyes and to understand your who you are Abba, and who you are in our lives the greatest thing we thank you we ask that you make us to grow every day and that we will be able to carry out your will. In the Shema Yahushua HaMashiach, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for Shabbat joining shalom. us. I want you to unmute your mic and Shabbat say Shabbat Shalom. And, and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat and Say bye to everybody. Have a wonderful Shabbat rest of your young. Hello. Shalom. Shalom, shalom, sister. Shalom. Shalom. Thank you. Thank you for the teaching and the sharing.